Well, hi there, sports fans, and welcome to another exciting edition of uh, Physics 12. Today we're looking at uh, Lesson 1.9, which is on uh, projectiles. So this indeed is for you sports fans because uh, anything that you throw or kick or hit with a bat or hit with some kind of a racket, uh, it becomes a projectile. And so we're going to be looking at the, the motion of that today and, and how to analyze the motion of a uh, projectile. Now projectiles involve motion in two, direct, uh, two dimensions, uh, the X and Y uh, direction, and so we need to analyze the, the motion in both of those in order to understand the, the motion of a projectile. Now the most important thing to understand immediately about projectiles is that we analyze the motion in the X and Y directions independently. So the motion in these two directions are kept separate. And if you can separate them in your mind, think about what's happening in the X direction independently of what's happening in the Y direction, that will really help you in understanding uh, and analyzing motion of a projectile because they really are separate. So what we can say is it could be said that what happens in the X direction stays in the X direction and what happens in the Y direction stays in the Y direction. So we keep them uh, completely separate. So we analyze the X direction on its own, we analyze the, the Y direction on its own. Now together the two of them uh, define the, the trajectory of a projectile, but when you're doing your analysis Keep them separate um, in in your analysis, and try to try to keep them separate in your mind as well. And that will help you understand what it is that's happening uh, throughout the trajectory of a projectile. So here's an example of, of a projectile. This is a ball that's been launched and it's uh, bounced a couple of times here. And as you can see, um, the motion is quite rightly described as a parabola. And indeed, this is the uh, the, the motion of a parabola, and uh, and the equation of its motion would would be uh, the, the equation that you would recognize as parabolic um, in in nature. And so I, I, you probably come across this in math already. Equations of a parabola um, and and the the trajectory of these objects of projectiles, you would recognize that as a as an equation for a parabola, and that's in, that is indeed what it is. Um, so, what we need to do then is, in in analyzing projectiles, we need to look at the x component and we need to look at the y components, and we need to look at them separately, because what's happened here is when something is launched and it's given a velocity component in the x direction that velocity component will always be the same. There is no acceleration with a projectile in the x direction. If it has an initial velocity when it's launched, that velocity will remain the same throughout its uh, trajectory. Not so in the y direction, of course, because the object is being accelerated in the y direction uh, by gravity. And so you might actually look at the trajectory of this and, and, uh, and incorrectly assume, well, <clears throat> it looks like what's happening is that it's slowing down in the x direction. So as the further it goes out, um, it seems that it's, it's slowing down in the x direction, but really it's not. The velocity component in the x direction is staying the same. What's happening is, is that it's speeding up in the y direction. So it appears as though it's slowing down in the, in the x direction, but really all that's happening is the component of velocity in the y direction is getting larger and larger as time goes by. And so once again, there is no acceleration in the x direction. Nothing is accelerating. It's not speeding up, it's not slowing down. However, in the y direction, gravity is accelerating the object, so it um, it is indeed speeding up in the y direction. And this, this illustrates it nicely here because what they've done here is they've, uh, they've launched two, uh, two balls, uh, a red one and a yellow one, at exactly the same time. 
And one is given um, an x component of velocity, and the other one is just uh, simply dropped straight down. And you can see that um, at the, the, the red and yellow balls are, are at the same height um, at each of the, the images. And uh, so what, what that's illustrating is that um, in the y direction, the objects are always in the same place. They're all, they will always be at the same height um, at any given time. What's different about these two is the only difference is that the yellow one has been given uh, a component of velocity in the x direction and the, one in the, the red one uh, does not. That's the only difference between these two. So you can see their motion in the y direction is identical in the y direction, not so in the x direction, however. So we can look at the, uh, the velocity um, the velocity vectors of the of the projectile throughout its trajectory and as you can see the velocity vectors will change over time so if it's launched with a certain velocity um, in this direction like here it has an x component to it that x component of the velocity again will be the same no matter where it is in its uh, trajectory uh, the y velocity however will change so the initial, veli uh, sorry, the initial y velocity will continue to decrease and at, at the top of its trajectory that y velocity will indeed uh, be zero at that point. So its velocity vector at that point at the top of its motion will be identical to its x component when it was launched. The other interesting thing to note about this, and again we're ignoring uh, uh, air resistance and, and anything else, but when, when the object gets to uh, the other end of its trajectory like so, its velocity magnitude will be the same as when it was launched. So the velocity here will be the same at launch. The only difference is it will be in the opposite uh, direction. Um, however, uh, that is uh, some good information to know uh, when you are analyzing these things is that the velocity over here, the magnitude of that, will be the same as this one here. And the, and the other useful piece of information is that at the top of its trajectory, the velocity in the y direction is indeed uh, zero. And that's use, some useful information when, when you're going to analyze some of these problems. So uh, problem solving then uh, involving projectile motion. And a um, couple of, couple of uh, things to note about that is that it's motion with constant acceleration. Um, it is in two dimensions, where the acceleration is, uh, is g, uh, which is uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, and it's only in the y direction. So the, uh, generally speaking, what we do is y is positive in the upward direction, the acceleration in the x direction is zero, and the acceleration in the y direction is minus g, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And a couple of other things to note, uh, the velocity in the x direction is constant, and they use a lot of other uh, symbols in here, which we don't need to worry about too much. The important thing about this is that we want to be consistent in, in the, the use of, uh, of direction, and so it's probably best if we just stay consistent using uh, positive uh, up, up would be positive in the y direction, uh, down would be negative in the y direction, um, positive in the x direction would be to the right, and negative in the x direction would be to the left. So if we just may, uh, if we just remain consistent with that, then it just makes it easier for when you're looking at somebody else's work. So problem solving with uh, projectile motion, first of all, you need, you need to read the problem very carefully and know exactly what it is that it's asking. Uh, have you heard this before? Draw a diagram. Uh, this is important not only with projectile motion, but in any kind of problem solving we're doing, you've got to have a diagram and include the motion of the object on the diagram as well. That is absolutely going to be critical. I will be harping on that all the time. So. Uh, save me the trouble of, of continuing to, to have to tell you that, just go ahead and draw a diagram right from the beginning. 
then choose an origin and a coordinate system, and then uh, decide on time intervals, uh, and then again, again, examine the x and y motions separately. Keep them separate and start thinking about the differences in the x and y directions and keep them separate in your mind and that will be very helpful as well. So then you list your known and unknown quantities. Remember uh, some, of the, some of the useful bits of information. The velocity in the x direction is always the same and the velocity in the y direction at the top of its trajectory or at the highest point is zero. Um, and the, uh, the velocity at the launch and the velocity at impact will be the same as long as they're at the same uh, height. And then uh, plan how you proceed. Go look, check, check out your equations, uh, see what information you have, and see what information that you need to find out, and then choose your equations that will uh, help get you there. And you can see some, uh, some here's some examples of, uh, of projectile motion. And indeed, when you look at them, you see that they are uh, indeed parabolas. And uh, so when you put the, the x and y motion together, you, your equation will be something like that, uh, which is indeed the equation of a, of a parabola. And uh, so you've probably come across those kinds of equations before and, and parabolic uh, motion. And that is indeed uh, what we are dealing with uh, when it comes to uh, projectiles. So, uh, what you've learned about parabolas that will that will come in handy uh, when we look at when we look at uh, uh, projectiles, and uh, that uh, indeed the the equations that, that we deal with are parabolas. Uh, and then the last thing again, keep in mind that when we look at the x direction, keep that separate from the y direction, and that will be uh, very helpful in, in terms of uh, dealing with these kinds of problems.